thank you, God, for this amazing day. And I know that you may be here this morning viewing us from your homes, viewing us from your jobs, viewing us from your cars, wherever you may be. I want us to take a moment and just lift up the name of Jesus. I want us to take a moment and just glorify him yes, for being who he is in our lives. Yes, there is none like you, God. We exhort your name right now. Father, we lift your name on high, God. Thank you for your spirit being with us in this place. Come on, wherever you are right now, can you just lift your hands, open your mouths, and give them the fruit of your lips. God, we exhort you. We magnify you. Ah, there's none like you, Lord. Thank you for cleansing the land, God. Thank you for keeping our family safe, God. Thank you for drawing us closer to you. Come on, that's it. That's it. Draw your family in. Draw your children in. Let them open their mouths and lift up the name of Jesus. Ah, oh, for it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be, God? We can't do this without you. We can't move without you. We don't want to move without you, God. We glorify you in this atmosphere. We lift your name up, God. That's it. That's it. Come on. Open your mouth and give him glory. Give him glory wherever you are. He deserves our praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He deserves the honor. I don't care what it looks like right now. We are in the land of the living. And this too shall pass. We've been through many other trials. We've been through many other situations. But the God that we serve is well able to keep us from all things that would cause destruction. Thank you, God, for your glory. Thank you for your peace. I speak peace over your lives. I speak peace over your family. I speak it in, in the name of Jesus wherever you are right now. The Spirit of the Lord is with you. And we declare angels are being dispatched right now to cover each and every home that is represented on today. We thank you, God, for your power and your grace that is in this place, God. We honor you. We honor you, God. With our mouths, we honor you. With our hands, we worship you. Thank you, God, for moving us through every atmosphere, God, and ensuring that it is saturated with praise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, that's it. Continue to worship him. That's it. Wherever you are, continue to worship him. Continue to worship him. That's it. Open your mouth and worship him. Ah, he's setting you free right now. Even before the speaker of the hour comes, I feel a refreshing coming to your life. I feel a freedom coming to your home right now. Yeah, God. I feel salvation meeting you in your place of deepest distress. For the God we serve is well able. Yes, he is. Ask me how I know. I'll tell you all about it. He's well able to keep us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for keeping our land. Thank you, God, for keeping our homes. I don't care if you're afflicted this morning. Healing is your portion. I don't care if you feel frustrated. Healing is your portion. I don't care if you feel challenged. Lack healing is your portion. And God will restore what's missing in your life. So we thank you, God, for your sweet spirit. We thank you for meeting us in this place. We honor your presence, God. The word of the God tell, the word of God tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It's going to start with our minds today, family and friends. Renew your minds in Christ and remember where he's brought us from. Remember the promise of where he's taken us. Let your mind 
be renewed in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the City of Restoration, our live streaming experience this morning. We are excited to have you with us this morning, wherever you may be. This moment is just for you. Amen. We're going to continue in our service, and we know that God has great things in store for us. We thank you. If you want to, at this present time, we are streaming through YouTube, and we would love if you could subscribe to our channel, if you can like this video, and also feel free to share it with someone that might need to hear a word on today, someone that wasn't able to make it to their church, someone that had conflict getting in the presence of God for themselves. Feel free to share this video. Amen. You can also share with them our website, www.thecityofrestoration.org, for more information on our ministry and how the ministry can be a blessing to your family. Amen. Our YouTube channel, which I believe you are on right now, is the core experience. Again, what we want you to do after you subscribe, after you like this video and you share it with someone, look on your YouTube channel there's a little bell if you click on that bell it will allow you to set your notifications and be able to know every time we're putting a video up every time it comes up you'll be the first one to know about it so don't forget that we'd love for you to do that today as well and before we move forward I'd love to share with you as well this opportunity right now to sow a seed into the ministry, amen. We know that the city of restoration is good ground. It has been tried, it has been tested, and there are miracles that continue day to day coming out of the city of restoration. So I'm encouraging you today to consider sowing a seed. We know that this temporary storm that we're in is about to pass. And as it passes, revival is coming to the body of Christ. So we wanna be prepared for what God is doing in the house and in your house. Would you consider sowing your tithes, your offering, a special seat on this morning? You ask how you may be able to do that. You can do that from our cash app, which is dollar sign, the city of restoration, or you can do it from our website, which is www.thecityofrestoration.org. So PayPal is available, Cash App is available. You also can mail that seed into the City of Restoration if you desire so. And that mailing address would be listed on our website. And we'll share that with you on this feed in the comment section as well. So we thank God for each and every one of you again being here with us this morning. We're getting ready to move right into an amazing part of this live stream on today. We know that each and every person in this world is desiring a word from the Lord. And there are going to be many opportunities to hear what God has to say as he heals our land. But I'm encouraging you today, sit wherever you sit, stand wherever you stand, grab your Bibles, grab something to take note, notes with, and prepare yourselves for what's coming right now here at the City of Restoration. Amen. Our apostle is coming. He's been praying and laying before God to be able to minister to you for this moment that we have. I want you to pray with him. I want you to preach with him. I want you to encourage his heart from your YouTube channel. You can even type in comments. And amen, if something blesses you, just share it there. Amen, or share it with him afterwards. We'd love to hear from you. Again, welcome to the City of Restoration. At this time, our apostle is coming. Would you put your hands together wherever you may be and welcome the overseer, the founder, our apostle of the City of Restoration, Apostle O'Neill Salmon. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm delighted how good and how pleasant it is for yeah. brethren to dwell together in unity. And so we are grateful here at the city to be able to have this opportunity to be right where you are in your homes, as it is already said for many of you on your jobs or possibly just you going about your day. I'm so delighted. City family, thank you so much for honoring me with your presence. More importantly, I am so grateful to be able to pastor a group of people that while displaced, they don't worry or they're not bothered about yeah. coming together on a Sunday morning in this kind of a way. Yeah. And so I'm yeah. so grateful to you for joining us here on this live stream broadcast. Now, you don't have to be a 
part of the city to be a part of this experience. So I want to go ahead and say welcome to not just our family, our church family that is, but welcome to the nation. Welcome to those of our international partners as well. Welcome to all of you that are a part of this live stream broadcast. This morning, we're going to go right into the word of God because I believe that in this hour, we need the word of God the more because trials and tribulations are on the horizon. Circumstances are what they are, yes, but God is still supreme. Amen. I want to give you a word that's been brewing in my spirit concerning this hour, and it's coming right from the text in Exodus chapter 12, Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 through 13. So while you take your attention there, while you get your Bibles out, while you open your iPads and your iPhones and all your gadgetries, um, I want to invite you to join me as we get ready to break bread together. But before we do that, I want to pray for the Holy Spirit to not just fill this atmosphere, but to fill your atmosphere likewise. Possibly your friends, your loved ones, your family are going to view this broadcast and are not only going to be moved by the Spirit in this room, but they're going to sense the Spirit of God in their house. And I want to believe God that he will, watch this, arrest their attention, one, and number two, move on their behalf, and number three, fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I believe that while we are touching and agreeing right now, breakthroughs can happen. Yes, I Lord. believe that while we are in agreement right now, and we're in full agreement, yes, that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, catch this above all we can ask or even think. Yes. And that's my declaration right now, is that God will move in a mighty way. Let us pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you right now for your spirit, O oh God, thank that makes Lord. rich, that has no sorrow. We thank you right now for the opportunity to break bread one with another, to open up your word, O oh God, and allow that word to come into our spirit, to come into our spirit, man. Lord, I pray right now that you would allow, O oh God, for someone who does not know you to come to know you today. Preach only like you can. Minister like only you can. Lord, we are grateful for this very opportunity to do what you've called us to do. Now have your way in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. If you don't mind, if you don't mind, go ahead right now and let us join together in reading the word of God. It's not on screen for you, but you can read it right there for yourself or tune in with your ears and hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. I'm coming again from Exodus chapter 12. I'm going to be reading the King James Version of the text, starting at verse 1. I want to spend some time here and break it down as the Holy Spirit gave me some clarity and some revelation concerning not just the times we're in, but his promises concerning us. Verse 1 says, And the Lord God spake, he spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto the congregation, as I'm speaking to you now, the children of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the souls. Uh -huh. Every man according to his Eden shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb, catch this, shall be without blemish. A male of the first year, he shall take it out from the sheep and from the goats. And ye shall keep it up for the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts of the upper door posts of the houses wherein thou shalt eat it. Eat not of it raw or sodden uh, at all with water, but roast it with fire, its head and its legs and everything therein. Uh -huh. And ye shall, watch this, and ye shall let nothing of it remain until morning. And that which remaineth of it shall, watch this, of it until morning he shall burn with fire. Uh -huh. And thus shall it ye eat of it, your loins girded and your shoes on your feet uh -huh. and the staff in your hand. And he shall eat uh, it, it with haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Just two more verses. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite the firstborn of the land of Egypt, yes. both man and beast. And against the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. 
And the blood shall be a token upon you, the houses in which you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. I want you to know the word of the hour is simply embodied in these few words. God has got you covered. There is a power about covering. God has got you covered. I know right now in this turbulent time, in this time of turmoil, in this time of great anguish, while the earth is crying out and asking for help and direction and they're seeking cons consolation for what they're going through, many of us are troubled, many of us are bothered, many of us are even succumbed to a bit of fear, but God has got you covered. I come only this moment in the volume of the book to encourage you concerning where you are right now my brother my sister my son my daughter family this is the hour for the church to prove itself true and prove itself strong i want to encourage you through the text that god has got you covered interestingly enough about this particular text in verse uh, 12 or chapter 12 verse 1 in this very moment where in which uh, there was a declaration declared o oh, to two to pass on to a great many so often right now we can feel like god in the midst of our own circumstance uh, doesn't hear our cry doesn't know what we're dealing with but I am come to encourage you that he does uh, yes, why sir. because he gave an answer he gave a declaration to Moses and to Aaron uh -huh. and he spoke concerning uh, what was to come uh, if you read verses uh, a few chapters rather beforehand you will recognize that this was a time where God was pro proving himself strong to not just the children of Israel but he was proving himself strong to those of the Egyptians yes. and to Pharaoh himself. Uh, he allowed for many a plagues. Uh, he allowed for many a circumstances in part uh, to come nigh to their doorsteps. Uh, but uh -huh. never before this moment uh, did it come into their house. Uh, never before this moment did it become real personal. Uh, there are things that are happening right now oh, in our world uh, that's causing us to finally look and uh, pay attention uh, to what is happening. Uh, because I promise you, uh, there are many things that we have lost that we undoubtedly said to ourselves uh, don't worry I can replace that uh, it's all right if I lose it I can get another uh, if I if I lose that I can always get something better uh, but when you lose a loved one when you lose a child when you lose an opportunity uh, there are some opportunities that you cannot replace I don't mean to preach to you right now I feel the presence of the Lord even in this broadcast uh, and so I want you to know once again that God has got you covered now watch this. Uh, the Bible opens up and declares in verse 1 that the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. Now you could easily read this and overlook some principles here. One of which I want to point out to you is simply this. That the Lord spake. Uh, that the Lord spake. That was interesting enough for me. Yes, that was Lord. just enough. Uh, because I realized that there is power in God's word. Uh, one word from God can bring uh, peace to the troubled heart. Wow. One word from God can resolve a great many of things. Uh, one word, believers, uh, hallelujah, can change a circumstance. Uh, I want you to know that the enemy, uh, if he would have his way, uh, he wants to deny you and deprive you of the ability to hear God's word. Uh, that's why we've got to pray for every church, uh, every pastor, every broadcast such That's as right. this uh, that is trying to bring forth the word of God into the houses, into the lives, and to the ears of the people. Uh, because the Bible tells us uh, that, catch this, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, imagine what one word can do uh, to the person that's looking for an answer. God spoke uh, to the children of Israel through the man's servant. Yes. Thank you, Lord. He Thank spoke. You, Lord. Somebody shout, he Thank spoke. You, he did not just speak, believers, but the Bible says that he spoke in Egypt. Uh, I want you to know that Egypt represented a place of turmoil. It represented a place of bondage. Egypt represented a place of opposition. We are in a season right now where we are feeling like uh, there is turmoil in the land. We are in a season whereby we feel uh, like there is bondage, uh, that there is oppositions. Uh, there are things that are happening in turn uh, that we have not the solutions for. Uh, yeah. Egypt was such a place. Uh, they could not deliver themselves out of Egypt uh, in their own strength. God had to send uh, someone in, uh, someone such as Moses uh, to deliver them from 
where they were. The Lord spake, watch this, to them and through them. It's interesting enough because oftentimes our greatest revelations often come in our greatest season of desolation. It's amazing. I'll say it again that oftentimes our greatest revelation comes in the season of our greatest desolation. Imagine what will come about as a result of going through this, through this pandemic, through this epidemic, through this circumstance. Imagine how much closer we are about to become to God. Imagine more so what God is about to reveal about himself to us and to the unbeliever alike. I want to encourage you because this day is a day recorded in history. Harden not your heart, but listen up. God is about to do exceedingly abundantly in the land. And to the believer, I want to encourage you once again. God has got you covered. Yes, God. Yes, he does. In fact, most of us, can I say this to you? Most of us believers won't hear God any clearer than when we are in trouble. Uh-huh. My God, finally, 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 Pharaoh had to pay attention thereafter. Read the story in entirety when you have a moment. But Pharaoh had to finally pay tribute and homage to uh, the voice of God. Uh, there are some people until it touches their very doorstep. Uh, they won't hear or give ear to uh, what the spirit is saying. Uh, and so, uh, my God, oftentimes uh, we are more keen. Uh, we are more, no more clearer than when we are faced with trouble. Uh, I said a post recently on my Facebook page uh, that said this, uh, that most often we are most creative uh, when our back is against the wall. Uh, hallelujah. Isn't it amazing uh, that some of us are not ready to hear uh, until death comes a knocking at our doorstep, uh, till our vitality and our lifestyles are being threatened. Uh, God is trying to get somebody's attention in this moment. Uh, catch this. He did not speak outside of their circumstance. Uh, he spoke to their circumstance. Uh, he spoke in the midst of what they were going through. Uh, he did not speak outside of what they were facing. Uh, he spoke to them while they were yet in captivity. He spoke to them while they were yet faced with turmoil. Uh, he yes. spoke to them while they were yet in bondage. Uh, yes. He spoke to them, watch this, while they were yet facing opposition. Uh, I want you to realize that this is your moment. Uh, hallelujah to rejoice uh, because Glory God now. is speaking to you and all of us uh, in the same measure uh, because our backs are against the wall. We don't have what room to do and to move about like we used to. Oh, can you feel the presence of the Lord? I can feel his presence in this atmosphere. God is trying to get your attention. What God is about to do, believers, is going to require you and I to listen at greater levels. My God, can I say it again? He is refining our ears. Hallelujah. So we can hear at different capacities, at different levels. Some of us are going to dream like we've never dreamed before. Preach like we've never preached before. Hear like we've never heard before. God is trying to open up the ears of our understanding just as he did here in the book. My God. The Bible says that he went forth after hearing and speaking and that the Bible says in verse 2, this month shall be unto you a new beginning. Uh -huh. I feel like we are in a season of new beginnings. I feel like the world, hallelujah, is finally coming to a place whereby they must acknowledge God. Oh my God, I feel like those that are of the wheat and the tears uh -huh. are finally coming to a recognition uh, or an understanding of who they are and whose they are. Yes, I feel like we're on the cusp uh, of something new. Uh, I feel like we're on the brink uh, of yes, God uh, revealing himself. Uh, I believe that after all that we've gone through and in all of this, uh, revival is about to happen yes. in the land. Uh, my God, I believe that God is yet pouring out his spirit. Uh, I believe God is yet pouring out his power. Uh, I believe God is yet revealing himself. Uh, and this is the new beginning. Yes, Lord. It's yes, amazing. Lord. May I point out a few things along the way. God's covering believers applies to those now that can receive, follow, and obey. I'll say it again. His covering applies. This covering applies 
to those who can receive, follow, and obey. Can I break it down for you? Because so often we consider ourselves that, oh, in turn, we receive the word of God, yes. But anybody can hear, but not everybody I found is ready to receive. The question being asked is, can you be taught? You see, oftentimes believers, as a teacher, I recognize this, that stubbornness defies wise counsel. I'll say it again. Stubbornness has the proclivity to defy wise counsel. When it is that we hear, are we ready to receive? Sometimes we hear correction, but we won't receive it as our own. Sometimes we hear instruction, but we will refute it because we didn't hear it from who we wanted to hear it. We didn't hear it in the way we wanted to hear it. Ah, watch this. They had to hear what Moses was appointed and anointed to do and to deliver. Pharaoh, in turn, had also to hear what God was about to do. Can you receive what God is saying right now? Not only believers does this cover and apply to those that can receive, but it also replies, it applies to those that can follow. Uh -huh. Some people receive but won't follow. Some people receive but won't follow. Can you follow instructions? Oh my God. Not the opinion of others, on, but can you follow instructions? Because someone's opinion is going to get them in trouble. Someone's opinion of what's happening right now uh, will get others in trouble. Uh -huh. Oh, but can you follow instructions? The instruction was given further throughout the verses uh, in chapter 12 concerning how they were to govern themselves. Uh -huh. Imagine if someone had an opinion contrary to such. I do believe uh, that there are likely people who in turn heard the same news uh, as many are hearing it now uh, concerning, uh, hallelujah, where they are and where Christ is and where in turn he wants them to be, but they are not choosing rather to follow the principles. Mm -hmm. So not only under covering do we need to know how to receive and how to follow, but we also know there is a necessity in, in obeying. Some people will follow believers in obligation, but some, watch this, but not in obedience. They'll follow out of obligation, but not out of obedience. It's amazing how in turn many will go about doing out of convenience, doing out of the, watch this, without a choice in the matter but yet uh, at the core of their spirit the core of their heart uh, they are not in obedience uh, hallelujah so they won't follow it to, in totality I believe that somebody is likely to lose their place in this hour because they won't hear what the spirit is saying to the church can I encourage you this morning uh, that there is a blessing uh, under cover there is a blessing being under God's covering. Yes. Let me move on real quickly to expedite this message. Uh, covering often incorporates, catch this, and employs collaboration. Uh, it often encourages and incorporates uh, and employs collaboration. What are you talking about, preacher? Read for yourself. The Bible says uh, in verse 4, If the household be too little for the lamb that they receive, uh, watch this, let him go to his neighbor, uh, my God, into to his house and according number the souls. Now watch this. They had to collaborate. Now let me be mindful here to say this. They were speaking to those that they had in common or commonality with. Watch this. In this hour brothers and sisters we need each other the more. We need to be able to connect and con watch this and come in agreement real quickly because I may need you and you may in turn need me. So there is power in agreement. There is power in collaboration. They had to have the ability to come together. Watch yes, this. Uh, common trouble. Let me put this before you. Make a note of this real quickly. Common trouble often has a way of bringing people together. Catch this again. Not just trouble, but common trouble ah. has a way of peop bringing people together <laughs> in a way nothing else can. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how many of us right now, not just here in Tampa, not just here in Florida, not just here in the U.S., <laughs> but all across the world <laughs> are dealing with the very same Amen. thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. And all of a sudden now we're all in the same boat yes. <laughs> sharing information 
communication across the airways. Uh, all of a sudden, we're tapped into each other's news feeds. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah. Common trouble has a way of bringing us together. Uh, the body of Christ ought to be coming together now, uh, praying and interceding, uh, touching and agreeing, yes, uh, and God. crying out for the same thing. Uh, God, I need your covering. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Yes. The see this, believers, this is it. The trick to surviving isn't found in isolation, but it is found in partnership. Wow. Yes, yes I know we've got to have social distances. <laughs> and and we, we, we got to have some proximity between us. So in turn, we don't pass on what might be on us. Uh -huh. But when it comes to the spirit... <laughs> Praise God, we need not exercise social distance, but we need to exercise communion. We need to be able to come together the more. Hallelujah, we need to be able to come together the more. And even while we might be displaced in, in our homes, guess what? Make your house your church. Make your house your pulpit. Make your house a place where God can show up. This is the moment where even the head of the house is proven. Yes, this is the yeah. moment uh, where the intercessors therein have to come arise, uh, come alive. Uh, this is your moment. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, you it see, is. your blessings, believer, may be next door. So that's why we've got to be careful not to be picky about who we allow in to serve us oh and better yet, who we might be called to serve. Mm -hmm. Praise God. We're in a sticky situation right now, and that's why we need not be picky about it, because in turn, our blessing might be just next door. Uh -huh. It's amazing why we live busy lives and often going about our day, we forego even getting an opportunity to get to know those around us. It's amazing. It's not until you lose something or miss something in turn that you realize the real value to the thing you once had. Uh -huh. Oh my God, imagine how much appreciation is going to come about as a result of recognizing uh, that the civil liberties, in fact, that some of us have. Uh, oh my God, we've once taken advantage of, or better yet, ignored altogether. Oh, but when God frees us from this thing, yes, when God Lord. puts us in place, uh, yes, and when Lord. God shows up and shows himself strong, uh, imagine how much more a greater appreciation we'll have, even for the little things. Uh -huh. Yes, God. Might I suggest also believers that they faced, even in the midst of all this instruction being given, that they also faced some delayed gratification. I want you to know this, that delayed gratification always reveal our level of patience. Mm, wow. Our delayed gratification often reveals our level of patience wow. or the lack thereof. You see, the Bible said that they were given instructions, even so to the T, that they had not only to have the lamb and themselves within the, in, within the house, uh -huh. but they had to wait, according to verse 6, till the 14th day. Okay. Imagine in turn, everything is happening and they're locked in like some of us are right now. And for 14 days, quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> they had been quarantined themselves for 14 days with a lamb in the midst. The lamb represented their blessing. The lamb represented their sacrifice. And they could not do for, oh God, for 14 days. Could not leave house, could not go about. The city could not do any other thing but remain undercover. Wow. Can I encourage you to realize this? Uh, that God is only setting you up right now uh, for what he's about to do next. Uh, while you feel quarantined, uh, while you feel like God has you on lockdown or shut down, uh, he is only setting you up. Uh, somebody touch your neighbor. Yeah, we can because we're in our own house in amongst our own family. I better yet give them a high five and say, listen up. Uh, God is setting you up. Uh, yes. God is setting you up. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. They had to maintain the sacrifice believers for 14 days and not be moved by provocation or out of desperation. Uh -huh. Imagine in turn if they had consumed the sacrifice before its time. Out of disobedience, if they had gone according to desperation. Oh my, what are we going to do? Oh my, oh my God, let me do more than I should. Uh-huh. 
Imagine in turn if they had just disobeyed even one tittle of God's word and instruction concerning them. This is not the hour for us to be in despair or to lose hope. Oh God, the Bible says when you see these things happen, look up for your redemption. Yes, Lord. Draw up now. God is about to redeem us. This is a word for every believer and every unbeliever alike. This is your time if you do not have your place and proper position in God. This is your time to draw closer to him. This is your time to come into his presence. This is your time to find yourself at his face, at his feet, in his presence. This is your time. Yes, Lord. Might I suggest also in this that the shedding of blood, according to the text, was an indication of new life. It was an indication of new life. God allowed for the shedding of blood to transpire because before there is life, mm -hmm. praise God, in life we've also got to experience death. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Exactly. So in turn, he allowed for the blood to be shed so that the people of God could go free. Yes, Can I suggest that, that in order to live, something has to die? What is it that God is allowing to die now? Is it possibly our selfishness? Is it possibly our proclivity to try to do things on our own without God? What is God allowing to die right now? Is it the ability to always provide for yourself and the pride that we so often find ourselves walking in. What is God allowing to die now Lord, so something greater can live? <laughs> is it possible that we have now, watch this, uh, we've gone from uh, a mindset of God's blessed assurance uh, to because we can afford some level of insurance. Uh, there is nothing greater than God's assurance. Uh, he's got us covered. Yes, Lord. Uh, he said in the instruction, he says, listen, I need you to do me a favor, and if I can just break script for a moment, I'll suggest this. That it was important that they not only adhere to what was said, but they regarded the power of what God was doing. He allowed for them, yes he did, to, put, to apply the blood. You see, the lamb had to die, but the blood had to be applied. Mm -hmm. Something may die. But God, in order for God to work, hallelujah, we got to continue to hold on to every word. Mm -hmm. He says simply this, whatever, wherever rather you eat. Watch this. It was important. It was important. Can I suggest this? Let me break it. Big script. It was important that they not only regard what they were eating, but that they considered that when it was all done, the Bible gave them instruction how to discard what remained. Uh -huh. Come on. Now, now watch this. You've got to ensure nowadays that the folks around you also want what you want. Wow. Now, 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 they couldn't just, in by virtue, by virtue, go into anybody's house, but they had to make sure that the people to whom homes that they might conjoin with had the same agreement, had the same capacity, the same determination, in part, uh, and had the same submission. Huh? There are so many people in life that are going to be tried in this very moment, even Christians alike, and it's going to be proven uh, whether or not you are truly uh, in right standing with God. Uh, in other words. Uh, just because you don't have the covering or the eyes of the shepherd or the under shepherd is not on you. Can you still maintain your salvation? Can you still maintain your walk? Can you still maintain your commitment? Just because you're isolated and you're in part at home and you don't have the ability to do as you would once do, can you still maintain your commitment? Oh my God, this is a time for the proven to of the body of Christ. Can I say Suggest believers uh, that now it's not more so about convenience, uh, but uh -huh. it is about conviction. Yes, uh, yes. Hallelujah. It's no longer about convenience, but about conviction. Uh, can you do as God has ascribed or appointed you to do? I've only got two more points, and I want to close with this. Uh, deliverance, catch this, uh, requires you to let go of what you had in order to get what you uh, watch this, what you were promised to gain. Uh -huh. I'll say it again. Deliverance. Uh, requires you to let go of what you had for what you will gain. Huh? The Bible said, huh, that, watch this, huh, that they had, touch me in verse 11. Hmm. Verse 11, the Bible says that they were to eat huh, and then have their loins girded huh, and their feet, oh, watch this, 
their shoes on their feet. That leads me to my next point. Simply this. Preparation. Praise God. Towards off that's devastation. God prepared them for where they were going next. Might I suggest ah, yes, God. that God is saying get ready, get ready, get ready. That God is saying that he's about to pass over the land. Might I suggest that God is about to return. Yeah, and I suggest that it's time that we get our house in order. Because the Bible said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. My God, there is something about covering. Oh, my God. While I was studying and preparing for this moment, God had me in a moment of regard and covering. And I thought about an umbrella. How it is that in, watch this, in a season where there is no need for it, it's often put to the side. Oh, but some of us have been putting God to the side for some time now. But when it is raining as it is now, all of a sudden we go searching when the rain is falling. And all of a sudden we're questioning, where is God? Is God where he left him? I went to the church house, they closed down. But where is God? I went to the storehouse, I can't find him. Where is God? Hallelujah. It's amazing how we don't appreciate God till we need him. Hallelujah. Can I encourage you that just as, hallelujah, we consider the question of where is God? It's not a matter of where he is, but where are you? My God. <coughs> Might I suggest that God has not left the building, but possibly you have. You see, one thing about this is this, that this covering, oh God, we don't oftentimes identify the necessity of it until yes, we need it most. Yes, God. And we've got to know how to handle God. You better say it. <laughs> we got to know how to respect God. Yes. We got to know how to cherish God. And so this covering, <laughs> hallelujah, is not oftentimes proven as a point of necessity until uh, we're in a place of desperation. Yes. They needed God. May I put this away for a moment and give to you a, a few scriptures that came to my spirit uh, concerning the covering. And I'll encourage you with this. Uh, Hallelujah. The Bible says that no matter what we go through, no matter what a temptation, hallelujah, we face, God is our covering. In fact, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that there is no temptation that has overtaken you except that which is common. What you're going through right now, believers, believe it or not, it is common. Hallelujah. God ain't scared. Hallelujah. He's not surprised. He's not alarmed that these things are happening. But I heard the word say further that God is faithful yes. my God and he will not allow or will not let you to be tempted above all that you are able to bear God is your covering need I also mention that 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 13 says but the Lord is faithful and he will not strengthen you watch this and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one ah. God is my covering yes, hashtag Lord. believers God is got me. He is my covering. Might I also yes, suggest uh, that Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 says, uh, be strong uh, and be courageous. Yes. Uh, do not be afraid uh, or terrified because of what you're going through. For the Lord your God goes with you uh, yes, and Lord. he will never leave you uh, nor forsake you. Uh, believers, uh, this is not the time for you to punk out. Uh, this is not the time for you to act like a wimp. Uh, this is the time to gird up your loins uh, and get ready uh, Get ready and get ready yeah. because God is calling you to a higher place Come into on. new realms with him. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, do not be afraid for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen and keep you and help you and you shall be my righteous right hand. Do not be afraid. God has got you covered. Uh, hallelujah. I want you to know, uh, hallelujah, Jesus, that the Bible says, yes, uh, discretion will protect you uh, and understanding will guard you. Uh, that's why, yes, we're still plugged in. Uh, that's why, yes, we're still regarding a great many things uh, as they occur. Yes. Uh, but my God said, uh, I will keep that which concerns you. Uh, hallelujah. The Bible says, don't forsake wisdom. Uh, some of us, we are ignorant at best uh, to what God is saying. Uh, don't 
despise wisdom today. Bible says that it will protect you. It will watch over you. Yes, My last scripture to encourage you comes from Psalm 5 verse 11. Bible says, do not watch this, but let all who take refuge in him be glad. Yes, By God today, believers. I am encouraging you yes, God. to remain hopeful, yes, God. to remain in anticipation for your great reward with him. Don't you lose hope. Uh -huh. Don't you lose sight of what God is doing now. You've come this far by faith. You've held on so long. <laughs> ah, my God. And just as they applied Ooh, the blood, yes, Lord. the Bible said, Hallelujah. when I see the blood, Ooh, let the blood of Jesus be on your doorpost right now. Ooh, when I see my children worship. When I see my children cry out. Oh God, when I see my children. Oh God, in my presence. When I see the blood. I'll pass. I'll pass. I'll pass over you. I want to encourage you. Make your home a worship. A place of worship. Make it a place of worship. Oh God, Eyes have not seen nor ears have heard. Yeah, your mama shake it oh The things that God has promised and prepared for his people. Oh my God. Those that were in the house were covered and suffered no loss. Stay under his covering. Stay under his covering. The thing about covering is simply this. It's really at best for some people. It's just enough for, for themselves. But God's arms are so wide. Thank you, Lord. That any one of us can find a place under him. Yes, God. His arms are so strong that in turn he can uplift and undergird anything you're going yes, through. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Stay under his covering. God is calling us to a greater place. Yes, God. And that we must trust him like we've never trusted him. I don't know who it is right now that's been seeking and saying, God, I need answers. Yes, God. I'm so troubled and in despair. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you because perhaps your faith has been wavering this season. This last week has been the one in which you've, been, you've you felt like all you've been getting is bad news. All you've been getting is disappointment. All you've been getting is reason to just throw in the towel and say, you know what? I can't do nothing. I give up. Yes, I want to encourage you, don't do so. You've come so far. You've Hallelujah. come too far. You've come this far. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. God has an answer. God is a beckon. He's a call. He's a prayer answer away. Yes, hey! Jesus. I'm praying for you. I pray that your faith yes, God. is growing. I pray that your faith does not waver. I pray that your faith yes, remains strong. I pray that your faith remains strong. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just looked at my notes and glanced one particular text. Psalm 20, verse 1 says, May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the Lord God protect you. That is my prayer concerning you, that God will protect you. That God will keep you, fortify you, and bless you. Yes, Lord. Can I pray for you? Perhaps you're not in the place you should be. Perhaps you're watching this morning and you're saying in turn, Lord, I want to walk with you. Can I pray for you that he saves you right where you yes, are? Lord. Perhaps this is your moment to give your life to him. It's been a long time since you've been in the church house. This is not about the structure of the building. This is about an opportunity to be a part of a family greater than your own. Have your way, the family of God is ready and awaiting you. Have your way, We've been praying for you, believe it or not, even though we may not know your name all across the nation and across this world this is your opportunity to come to know him oh god god is sending forth angels to minister to you right now that loved one that child right now may be crying out in their spirit make sure that your house is well make sure that your the people in your covering are well make sure they have a walk in a relationship with god make sure that they know in turn that if god were to return today that they are ready to meet him for when i see the blood God is looking for those that bear weakness to his name and have their name upon the air, upon themselves. Oh God, because a pastor, oh apostle, oh doctor, oh can't save you. I can only serve you, but I can't save you. Oh my God, so I can only but pray for you right now in serving you. I pray for you that you draw nigh to him. 
I want to lead you in a prayer right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I repent. Have your way, God. Forgive me for my transgressions. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of the things that I've done wrong. I repent, God. My desire is to walk in alignment, in alignment with you. My desire is to walk in agreement with your word and your promises over my life. Lead me in the path of wholeness and righteousness, in holiness. Lord, for I regard that without holiness, no man can see the Lord. Lord, make me holy, make me right. My brother, my sister, I want you to know just like that, Christ heard your cry. Yes, he Lord. heard your prayer and the sincerity of your heart. And I believe that today you are saved from what you are going through. Yes, Lord. I want you to yes, do me Lord. a favor. Don't end it there. Not only should you have already subscribed to this channel so you can get your daily bread, but you should take another step. And that is simply this. Make a connection. Make a covenant yes, to walk with him and with the family that you are now a part of. I want to be there for you, and so does our church in part. And so how we how can we accomplish this? I want to encourage you to do me a favor. In the comment section, just drop your name. Just put the words, I've committed. I've committed, whatever that might mean. I've committed to a walk with him. I've committed to a life with God. I've committed. I want to pray for you. I want to call out your name this season. I want to believe God that he'll keep you and continue to fortify you. I want to be there as your pastor. Possibly some of you are displaced right now and your own church is not able to function as it would. Can I just be, even if in the interim, your pastor, that person in your corner strengthening you and providing you the word? Possibly you're looking for an opportunity to be a part of a body of believers. I want to encourage you right now. This is an opportunity for such. Even while we are displaced as, as in part not being able to come together as we normally would, you can still be a part of this family, this city. Yes, Lord. I want to have you to consider being a part of this movement. Yes, Lord. It's a core experience. Be a part of it. God is doing great things in the house, in the city, and in the land. How can I make a part or make a connection? Just say this in the comment section. I want to connect. That's all you got to do. I want to connect. That allows us to know that you want to be a part and we will reach out to you this week concerning how you can be a greater part of the movement here at the city. The last thing I want to do in, in prayer is simply this before I make one more call of action is simply this. I want to pray for you because perhaps this word has stirred in your spirit something of stirred in your spirit. Perhaps this has encouraged you well. And so I want to pray that your faith does not fail. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come before you once again. And I cry out for your people. I cry out for their soul. I cry out for their heart, God. Cover them under the blood. Affirm them in the places of their weakness. For your strength is made perfect in our weakness. Oh God, I pray that they will understand who you are and whose they are. Hey God, Lord. Lord Jesus, affirm them and build them up and strengthen them and fortify them. Cause them to hold to your word. Yes, God. Ah, Jesus, strengthen their faith right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Believers, before we go, you might have missed it at the top of the hour. I want to encourage you in this. Before you go, do me a favor. Just like, subscribe, make a comment. Let us know you were here. Shout out from wherever you're from. If you're from here in the local area, we want to know about you. If, you, if, if, if by chance you are watching nationwide, we want to know where you are. Perhaps, perhaps you're even across the world. We want to know where you are. And also what you can do there is drop your prayer requests because I'll be praying. Yes, we'll be praying. We want to pray for you. So we want to encourage you to do that. We want to encourage you to not lose hope. Here's something else you can do to help us and support us. Even as we go forward, I believe there's power in our seed. Yes, Lord. This is not to beat you down or to, to put any stress on what you might already have or not have. But it is an opportunity. Because when we ask God, one of the things I say so often to our church is when we ask God for harvest, he asks for a seed. I want to encourage you to sow your seed. Sow your seed today. The information will be on screen. It will be somewhere scrolling. It will be somewhere for you. In turn, but sow that seed, knowing in turn that is going to allow for us to do the work and do, and even more. Watch this: open up a reservoir of blessings to come to your house. Yes, Lord. That is my faith and my belief. 
Listen, family, as we close the service today, I want to say thank you so much. City family, I love you. I miss you. I miss the ability to be able to touch you and to be able to wrap my arms around you and see your smiling faces. And so while we might not have that right now and the ability to really always come together in the groups that we are accustomed to, I want you to know that your pastor is praying for you. Your first lady is doing the same. My family, I want to say thank you to my family that's assisting us even right now in, in doing this. May the Lord bless you and keep you and may his grace shine upon you as we go forward now. God bless you. It was a delight. Join us next week, same time, same place. Don't miss Tuesday Bible study. More information will be coming on that as well. God bless you. Take care.